Good morning, everybody. Well, this morning, I'm finally ready to finish up my wagon. Um, we actually have a guest with us, which I'll show you later, but you can see off to the side is her trailer, and she's actually got some horses with you, her, and we will uh, introduce you to her in a few minutes. But let me show you what's going on in my wagon. So I have the floor basically all done. There's a few more things I need to do, but I need to get it on the wagon. So I've got the skid steer in the back, and I've got that lifted up, and I've got my excavator in the front holding this front end of it up. And now I am going to just push the wagon right in there and drop it down. So what I'm trying to do is get about about two feet ahead or 20 inches. I got 22 inches right there. Uh, the whole wagon itself, it's going to be, it's a guess as to how far I want it. So what I ended up doing even is I kept these stringers nine inches and a couple of people have already actually commented on it and suggested it after I'd already done it, which I, I, I think is a, I think it's going to work a lot better. Is So I just notched this out so that I could have the full nine inches and that's going to give me a little bit more height above the tires. So now I can see it's going to hit right there. So I have to get this slid over just a little bit and drop that in place. And yeah, I'm hoping it's going to work. So we'll get this done and we'll show you after it's finished, I hope. So between jobs here, Jim is exercising the horses. Good morning, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, Jim's wife, and I'm here today with Erica. Marshak. Marshak, I always mess up her last name. Um, she's here visiting us, and she is a true horsewoman. She uh, takes her horses with her wherever she goes, and we'll introduce um, the horses to you this morning and find out a little bit what Erica's been up to and um, a few other things. So Erica, why don't you go ahead and introduce what kind of horses are these and their names and um, ages? So I started with the gray mare in the middle. That's a little bit. She's 12 years old. She's a Morgan Pertron, bred in Vermont, a little hillside farm. And uh, I got her as a five-year-old. And I bred her three times. And um, these are the full sister fillies that she's produced with me here on the road. Um, and I bred the Morgan Pertron mare to an American Brabant, who was a European Brabant Suffolk cross. <laughs> wow. And he was a, a logging horse down in Appalachia. So they're, her mother worked, uh, the Morgan worked, they're all from working stock. So they're a four-way cross of workhorses. So um, what do you, what are you able to do with with these horses? What kind um, of things have you done? So the, the damn little bit, um, she rides. We've trail ridden all over the country. Um, and she's also uh, broke to work. Um, she'll cultivate, she'll plow, um, she'll twitch firewood. She's only 14'2 and 1,250 pounds, but um, she'll, she'll work where you can. She'll lead a four up, she'll do a three abreast, you know. <clears throat> Not always the most willingly. She has a little <laughs> opinion about things now and then, but, but she's reliable. And, uh, and I've started the three-year-old, the Roan is Zosha. And it's a weird name, but I named her after my great aunt. So there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> she's wonderful. I've got her started. She drives um, single and double. And she started under saddle. And she's green at everything, but um, she'll try anything. She's, she's got, uh, she's just got a lot of try in her and she's, she's real, real quiet. I love her. Um, Jenny's a two-year-old, also named after a great aunt. 
And um, she's just being a baby. She has had harness on her. She's ground driven a little bit. She has manners uh, going on the trailer and clipping and all, all the things a two year old can do without uh, the stress of real work. So I'm kind of fascinated by Erica's lifestyle right now. And if you missed it, we did do a video. We went to visit her when she was um, braiding and that's what she, what she does, um, braids at shows for these um, really fancy horses. And we can ask her a little bit more about that. But we do have a video on her actually doing that. Um, so we'll put a link to that above. But Erica, um, this is your home here, this trailer. Yep. And um, how long have you been doing that? Well, so um, I am a professional braider. I've been doing that since 2006. Um, but uh, more so, I'm a farmer. <laughs> And right now, I've been landless for four and a half years. Um, we had a nice market garden um, situation that we had to leave. So um, the two things that interested me was, you know, making money following my job. Uh, and it's hard to do that in one spot. It's expensive to own a home that you're never at. So uh, I just went on the road full time. And uh, the other thing that besides travel that interested me was breeding my own team of farm horses and uh, people said you can't do both but I've done it so there you go <laughs> we, we, and it's all because of the wonderful people in my life um, we stay with draft horse folks and other horse folks um, all across the country up and down the eastern seaboard mostly but um, yeah I have every single person that has let me call their place home temporarily to thank mm -hmm. well it's really uh, neat and unique and Erica's been helping me in the garden, which I truly appreciate. And um, we are going to be showing more of Erica uh, um, here with us. She's going to be helping us with her horses and different things for the next little bit. So we will be doing that. Um, also, Erica is a big part of DAPNET. Erica, could you share with us what DAPNET is? Sure. DAPNET is uh, the Draft Animal Power Network. We're a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization. Um, we're incorporated in Vermont, but we have uh, a kind of a global range, more or less. Our, our events are regional, but we've got friends across the globe. Um, and on our Facebook page and our former DAPNET forum before Facebook um, was the rage, um, we've we've. Oh, we've shared resources and stories and helpful hints and, and whatnot. We've been really collaborating, um, helping Teamsters far and wide, or just, just helping connect. That's why it's a network. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do have uh, some regional events. We're, we're going to have a plow event this fall. Um, we had a couple events already this spring, and sometimes we do some DAP chats on, on Zoom. Um, we have a, a a website that we've keep building more and more um, but our big event is the draft animal powered field days and this year it's going to be held at Shelburne Farms in Shelburne Vermont um, it's a former uh, Vanderbilt Webb estate I believe it, it's a beautiful picturesque giant barn overlooking the Champlain uh, Lake Champlain and the Adirondack Mountains mm -hmm. um, we're going to be having it starts, gosh, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. And on the 29th, we have is a Friday. We have a day of intensives. Uh, we do beginner teamster workshop uh, with horses and with oxen. And there'll be a big forestry demonstration. We'll be harvesting a whole truckload of, of timber. So there'll be kind of a, an intensive all-day operation and how that happens in mass. Um, and we're going to also be hosting um, a couple gentlemen from Canada, and I can't remember their names, so I won't try to mess them up, but they will be coming down and uh, working on an all-day intensive in the field, and they're going to be bringing some of their unique tools down, and um, we're going to have a blast uh, having some educators from above the border with us this year. And then the rest of the weekend are small, smaller workshops throughout the day. Uh, we have a benefit auction. People bring things. Um, we auction them off and, 
and uh, raise money for the event that way. I think we're going to have a banquet dinner Saturday night. Uh, there might be some entertainment music, but we have lots of presenters. Um, it's, it's a kind of a conference, so everyone that coming with animals uh, has been um, invited, basically. Uh, we, we invite people to... Uh, we invite people to let us know what they have to offer um, as far as teaching, if they mm -hmm. want to bring a team, and then, then we, uh, we see what fits in where and, and make that selection. Um, so typically some field days are, you know, open to all, but ours is, is more of a conference. Mm -hmm. So I hope that sums it up. Yeah. I'm sure I forgot a bunch. Yeah, we, pl we plan on attending. It was fun last year. We met a lot of nice people. So we're hoping to attend again this yeah, year. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yep. So we're going to head up to the woods and meet Jim up there. He's logging this morning, and we'll see what they're up to. Um, before we go uh, see Jim, Erica has a tip she, she would show us on how, if you are not into cutting your tails the way Jim does his, Erica has a way to keep them, you know, up and out of the way if you need to when you're working them. So, Erica, show us your trick. Sure. Um... So for a while there in my life, I was a polo groom, and we learned how to put up a tail with no tools or ties or anything. Um, so about halfway up the tail, find a strand of hair and separate it. You can take your tail into three pieces. If you don't have a brush, just use your knee. <laughs> you have your three pieces that you braid together regular braid um, and you have to get good at guessing when to stop but you don't braid very far split it back into two go around the back with each piece um, sometimes you can do it a second time with this horse I'm not going to do it a second time um, well, maybe I can I can do it over there Yeah, okay. Back into three pieces. Braid that down. Take that piece off the side. Add it in. The model's moving. Yes. <laughs> she wants to learn too. That's right. We get it. She's got in the sun for us now. So this extra piece here, you double up your little nub. Just wrap it around and slide it down to lock it. Wow! So, look at that. so you've got your your wild tail tame now. And if you want to cultivate something and you don't want that dirty tail swishing your crop for food safety, you've got your tail out of your way. If you want to, uh, I, I love doing this for plowing matches. Um, because uh, I could see down through their legs to, to watch my line. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a real quick, tidy way to put that tail up and to undo it, push up, unwind, unbraid, unravel. Well, I think I'd probably have to uh, replay that a few times, but <laughs> it's doable. <laughs> It looked really nice, yeah. and, it was, and it looks like it would hold really well. It does. Um, they play polo that way. Yeah. I, I think the Argentines came up with it. Oh, it's awesome. So, you got skills. Well, I, I have a lot of uh, experience in a multitude of equine disciplines, so it's it's fun having different things to uh, to add to new ones. You know. Yes, that's right. Cross, well, crossover skills. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.
I like that. Chop that. Oh, bye. Hey. Hey. Nice step. Cheek, 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 cheek. Ah, ah. Cheek. Cheek. Oh. Hip, hip. I tap that. Tap. Oh. Ah. Sip a little bit. Chee, 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 chee. Tap that. Oh. Bye. Bye. Oh. Tough step. Oh, ba, ba, ba. Oh. Nice step. Oh. Nice step. Careful. Oh. So after we got back from the woods, we, Erica hooked up her team and used our riding cultivator and Jim and I went out with Ken and our walk behind cultivator and we went right to town and got the corn weeded and got quite a bit done hoping to get the weeds down before the rain came. It's still pretty weedy. It looks more like potatoes and corn, but at least we got a lot of the big weeds down. And I think the corn is gonna grow above the weeds. It is almost the 4th of July and it is knee high or above knee high and it certainly will be by then. It's growing like crazy now.
So here we have something. Brenda and Erica decided to go for a ride tonight. They're just riding them bareback. But these are the same two that Erica was cultivating with out in the cornfield today. And uh, they're just a nice multi purpose type of horses can do light jobs like cultivate and things like that and, and make great riding horses also. <laughs> this is Erica's two year old. Not very happy that she's all alone and the other two are gone out riding. Well, it's the start of a new day, and before Jim goes up and gets a load of logs, he's gonna hook on to this newly fixed wagon with the team and take it down to the field below. He's got some bystanders this morning. get the right weather. We know it will come soon. Just getting a little late, that's all. Now off to get a load of logs up the road.
there they go off to get the load of logs. Here they come with a load of logs. Well, we certainly hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you all have a great day.